Okay, now let's talk with the Amiibo. Uh, I have my iPad. And there's a couple things you want to make sure that are happening before you start the Amiibo. If you go to your settings, you want to make sure that the Bluetooth is turned on. Okay? If it's not, the Amiibo will not be able to connect with the interface and the app. So, Bluetooth is on. Next thing, our Wi-Fi needs to be turned on and it needs to be connected to Netgear-5G. That is the current Wi-Fi at our church that we're using for our streaming purposes. I'm going to go exit out of there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Mevo app and I'm going to open it up and it's going to show you its opening logo and then it gives me some very simple instructions. It says please switch on your Mevo. So I'm going to go switch on the Mevo camera. Okay, it gives me the, the information it couldn't find once I'm going to close. And let's see, it'll sometimes it'll find itself. Uh, switch on. There it goes. Okay. So again, it took a little while for it to kind of just look for itself. So it says Mevo 39668. That's the one we're using. We're connected to Netgear 86-5G. I'm going to hit press connect. And then now we'll enter into the Mevo interface. And there I go. So I'm recording this, and you can see how I'm recording it. So there's a couple things I want to show you about this interface. To the left is our settings button which allows us to go into um, some uh, special uh, parameters. This one is called Camera Assistant and allows us to switch Find Faces, Live Follow, and Autopilot. Actually, this mode here for Camera Assistant, we use Find Faces, Live Follow, and Autopilot. And what that allows us to do, it allows us to let the camera kind of just make choices by itself. Um, and it kind of acts like its own camera producer, um, selecting shots and switching back and forth and doing some real interesting things. There's a setting where we can have it move slow, meaning that maybe it'll hold on a, sh a shot longer and takes its time, maybe standing on a shot longer than uh, this one would be more of a faster moving switching. So I'm going to leave that in autopilot. Actually, I'm going to turn it off. Go back here. I'm going to turn off autopilot because I don't want to, I want to show you some very special things. Uh, that is your settings mode. If you go back there, there's a microphone mode. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then there's some color filters. I typically leave it on normal. And then there's our playback. So Mevo camera has a uh, SD card in it. And that SD card allows us to not only stream, but it allows us to record at the same time those uh, events that we're trying to capture. So you can go back in your library and actually see, read the card. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, our settings our settings wheel button. This is our, uh, some things we have here. These are our general settings, our network live streaming. You don't have to mess around with this too much. Uh, so we'll just leave it at that. I'm gonna go ahead and press this button up here to exit out. I'm gonna press this button to exit out. This is the one I wanna show you real quickly. Right now, this is your uh, preview mode and the little screen on top is your program mode. Preview means you see everything or the shots that you want to switch to, the little one on top is actually what is being recorded and what is going out to our stream. So right now we're in the full wide shot, the full uh, fisheye kind of thing here. So I want to show you something. You'll notice my little face right here. You see a little blue, there's a little blue square over my face because the camera is actually using that fine face feature, see? And basically yeah, it's a really powerful feature, uh, facial recognition. Uh, but I want to do something different because I don't just want to do a standard wide shot. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to press and hold on a section. Oh, there you go. I'm just going to press once. And you'll notice that now the box has become smaller and, and the, uh, the program view now has a tighter shot. And if I walk around, you'll notice that little box begins to follow me. Really, really great stuff. Again, I'm moving around. So it acts like a cameraman literally following my moves. And so sometimes if I'm doing this, it'll kind of, uh, it may get people dizzy. So we gotta be careful on that live follow. So again, we're in our wide shot uh, mode. What I wanna do now is I wanna press a simple section here. Now if I press and hold, you'll notice that that now becomes stationary. What I've done is I created a static shot. And then you'll notice that it's a static shot because it has a little yellow box there. And I can set up multiple static shots. So I click and hold over here. Come on now. Click and hold. Let me see. Click 
click and hold. Okay, so what I can do is I can preset different shots here, and again, you'll notice they're they're shown as a shot by its yellow thing here. And the cool thing about that is I can move that shot around a little bit, readjust it. And this shot over there, maybe I can pinch and zoom. I can click on this one, I can move that over there. So uh, really quickly, uh, I've set up four different shots. Again, the first one there, and this one, and this one, and this one. And that allows me four different angles. Maybe I'm doing an interview or like a video, a tutorial right now. Again, I'm, I'm showing myself and then maybe I say, hey, I want to switch to the product that I'm showing and I can have some nice close-ups here. And then this button right here is the full wide shot. So let me show you another thing that you can do. If you press this little button here, it shows you all the shots that are currently set up that you did earlier. And they're notified as static shots. You have this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And the always in the middle is the full wide shot. You know which shot is active or going out of the camera because it has a blue box around there. So this is one way to set up maybe an event. Uh, maybe you're doing an interview and you have a person on the left side. Uh, maybe you have a person on the right side. And then so you set up three shots, a full wide shot, and then one with the person on the left, and one with the person on the right. And then in, uh, during the show, you switch those. Um, I'm going to show you what happens here. If I go back to my camera assist and I do autopilot, I want you, I want you to see a little bit here, uh, exit out there, that the camera now, if you watch the uh, program out, you're going to see that this thing is now switching by itself. It just went to a wide shot, went to a nice crop shot, and let's see what other shots it goes to. Uh, it kind of just cycles through them at some kind of parameter. Uh, I don't really know exactly how it chooses, uh, but that's how it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. That's autopilot. Let's turn off autopilot. I'm going to turn off live follow and find faces. We don't really need that right now. So what if happens if I set up a shot and I don't like it? You can click and hold it. Come on, click and hold it. And the yellow box will disappear. Come on, disappear. There it goes. Click. So it is kind of helpful before you start to do streaming that you set up some shots ahead of time and practice otherwise uh, the Mevo is forgiving in a couple ways but once you're live whatever you see is going out there so whatever you're playing around with this thing here uh, it's going to happen let me show you one quickly I'm going to pinch and zoom over here notice the program mode uh, Mevo also can do panning so if I'm going to do this you'll notice over there kind of a quick pan and this doing a tilt now maybe that's too fast for you. Now watch this one. If I if I click over here and I zoom it over or pan it, and I press my finger, keep it there, and then I let go. However long I chose to hold my finger down, you'll notice up here, it's doing a slower pan. Okay. So again, those are some of the things. Again, if I zoom out and I pinch, hold it, you're now going to see a nice big uh, zoom out on the screen. So that's at the interface of that. Let me show you real quickly uh, how we would do some streaming. So I'm going to go to wide. Let's go to our, um, excuse me, our red button here is our record button. So I'm going to go press the record button. We have three options. We can record HD. Uh, rec uh, Mevo records natively at 720. Uh, we can also use live stream, but the one we're using a lot is Facebook. Facebook is, is free and it works well with Mevo. It's actually designed to work really, really well. So what we would do, it's already logged into our Westlake Community Baptist Church Facebook page. Uh, and then it says a little thing, what's happening? In the what's happening box, I usually type in the day of the event. For example, uh, if today was April 1st, I can type in April. And I put April 1st, comma, and then I would also put the year 2017. And that's just a good way on Facebook. Uh, you can do more later on if you want to do like Wednesday night Bible study or youth group or worship celebration. All those kind of events we can get a little bit more detailed. Uh, but for now, at least having the date is very important. And now you'll notice two other options that we need to do before we press go. We want to make sure that our setting is set to low. I'm sorry. Set to low. Uh, we're currently our, our church interface, uh, I'm sorry, our upload speed is not very fast. We have about... 1.5 to 2 megabits uh, upload bandwidth. 
not really uh, suitable for a high definition streaming. So we're going to keep it at low and that makes sure that people on the other end don't have too much of a stutter and drop out. So we keep it on low. Uh, let's go back. Uh, it's going to be low. Oh, sorry. It's going to be low and it's going to be uh, public. And then when we're ready, we're going to press go live. Once you press go live, literally you are live and everything happening is going out into Facebook world. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to escape that. I'm not going to record. But now say you didn't want to stream an event. Maybe you wanted to, um, maybe you wanted to uh, record an event and that's very possible. Maybe uh, it actually allows us to do something in a higher quality. What you do, you press the same button there and you press record HD. And you'll notice once I press record, uh, the Mevo camera itself goes into a red mode and you'll see it uh, when you do that uh, on the ring on top, it goes red. And you'll notice right here, it gives us the reading of how much data is left on our SD card and the timing of the recording so far. Okay, if I click it one more time, it'll show me the battery life that's on the Mevo, uh, the, uh, the Wi-Fi bandwidth, and also the audio that we've chosen to use. So I'm going to click on that and to stop the recording or stop a stream, you click on it once and it says slide to stop. Click it over and hold it. And it now says your recording is in the library. Tap to view. Okay, there's a couple more things I want to show you uh, and that is concerning audio. Audio is very important. In fact, a video may only be 50% of what's important about our streaming. If an audio signal is not clear or loud enough, people will often kind of get discouraged and may not want to listen for the duration of our events. Some of our events go over an hour, and so listening to bad quality in today's world and modern media expectations, it's just better to have good audio. So uh, right now we're gonna show you how to do a setup using an external mixer, using an external microphone, and how we plug it into the Mevo.